Well, here we are. We've been listening to the musical version of Psalms 42. And most, um, most literally taken as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Today, um, today's lecture has been inspired by the introduction I have made last week to the treasures of heaven. And just to recap in a broad terms, um, in um, Friday's blog, we learned about how our fruits are not our reward as biblical entrepreneurs by fruits how our profit in our business is not our fruits and our fruits are not our reward as well as our treasures are neither the fruit nor the reward and if you need some uh, clarifications on that one um, please um, seek out the other video that has been recorded um, Right now, I just would like to say that I'm focusing on our treasures because when, um, David is the best person to quote and turn to in, the, in terms of treasures. Why? Because we have recognized in the previous video that 
the true treasures are flowing out of the human heart. Now, this is the human heart that has already been transformed by God. These are not the hearts of stone, but the hearts of flesh that have God's law written upon them. These treasures are multiplied by sharing them instead of holding it to oneself it would be the treasures that we share with others treasures that are not shared indeed are not blessings if we are no blessings unto others if we are no salvation unto others then we have failed both us spiritual Israelites, biblical entrepreneurs, and people of God. Also, we have recognized that the treasures that are gathered outside of the heart are worldly treasures. If we are seeking heavenly treasures, they would be coming from the heart and would be gathered there. Therefore, the most um, obvious way we can detect heavenly treasures is by listening to someone because they reveal themselves through speech. The um, character of a biblical entrepreneur is taking, um, desiring to take after the character of Christ and the only glory of man is to glorify his Lord. Therefore, our greatest treasure is, is to know his word. And we identified how can we know our Lord is to know him personally, is to know his character, is to know him through his word and teachings and to recognize him in others and service to others. We have, um, if we have recognized that, that Jesus is our basically our only treasure in our heart then um, it is the best always to turn to Jesus himself to define himself to tell us who he is and he made such statements in the book of John seven times he had stated that I am the bread of life I am the light of the world I am the door and the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the wine. And these seven I am statements that we have summed up in the, the treasures of heaven. Also, these seven I am statements are in, closely tied up with the seven miracles also found in the book of John. And those seven miracles were in order of appearance, the turning water into wine, the healing of the centurion's son, healing at the pool of Bethsaida, Bethesda, and uh, he, uh, feeding the 5,000, walking on water, healing of the born blind, and he, uh, raising of Lazarus. These seven miracles we're going to strongly tie in also with the seven I am statements of Jesus. And in order for us to get started with our topic today, um, it's going to be John, the, the chapter John 7, 6, the entire chapter, because it includes the feeding of the 5,000, as well as the first I am statement of, I am the bread of life. Here we go. And I am going to read... Because today I am here by myself. So chapter 6 from the book of John. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain 
and there he sat with his disciples and the Passover, a feast of the Jews and I. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him. For he himself knew that he would do what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennyworth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, there is a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the man sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the man sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves and um, when he said, had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, and much of they, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. Let me say that again. Then those men when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. When um, Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. But he said unto them, It is I. Be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship. And immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. The day following, when the people who stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other, none other boat there, save that one whereinto his disciples were entered. And that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias, nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took sh shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when comest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, 
but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endures into everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then say as they unto him, that shall, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he has sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign shewest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What does the work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh, he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he, sh he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up against at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he had said, saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourself. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, And they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the Lord. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. 
for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things shall he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What, and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not and who would betray him. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then says Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Well, I wanted to read this entire chapter, not only because... Um, about three or four of them, the treasures are in there, but because it is really in great detail goes into what the bread of life is, manna from heaven. And as Jesus says, that as the forefathers have eaten of the manna in the desert and they still perished and died. How much more of a manna is he who comes from heaven and speaks unto them eternal life? So, um, in order to be able to relate to that fact, now we could also still look up Exodus chapter 16, especially the place between um, verses 13 to 18. It talks about the heavenly manna. And um, well, um, the bread of life and how is that related to the heavenly treasures and how can they be collected inside the heart? Well, we know that Jesus is manna from heaven and he is the embodiment of the living gospel truth therefore um to have access to the the gospel truth we got to read the gospel the word of god seek it search it and seek it with understandings of the heart this is um this is this is this is one of the greatest treasures is the word to gather treasures in heaven is to gather all of God's words and messages in the heart by both by learning it by heart and memorization but also just 
with an understanding heart. When um, Jesus was preparing himself for his mission and it was part of his culture and it was the very word that he embodied, he has committed the entire Torah to heart. Well, he might have been given some divine skills uh, there and some divine gifts. I personally cannot commit <laughs> an entire chapter to heart even. But by reading it, it makes an impression on me. And the what I understand from the word becomes memorable for me. And that is just the minimum. When Jesus had been taken to the test in the desert and encountered Satan himself and was tempted, he three times not only de declined and turned away Satan, but all three times had achieved it, not using his own words, but the words of the Torah, the words of God, the scriptures. And this is one of the most important and most significant things to know about um, the trials and tests of life is that we have to have in our hearts the resources, enough treasures gathered of the word of the Torah so that when time arises, we can turn to them for support for salvation, for for um, for fighting the evil forces and the devil, and yes, gathering tre treasures in heaven begins with knowing the word of God and having it hidden into our heart, just as David says in Psalms, "Your word I have hidden inside my heart." Um. And, and that is basically what I would have liked to um, tell you about today. If you are interested to discuss the very same uh, subject of the, the bread of life as the first uh, treasures gathered in heaven, um, I would like to tell you that there is a fellowship group discussion going on on any topic you wish to um contribute and that is on a phase group fellowship facebook um fellowship is called the lion-hearted fellowship and um, the link pretty much you can see it in one of these pages on the same pages you can find this video um you can like us and join the group continue the discussion there is so much more to be said about the mana and the heavenly mana i will not be able to bring it into this one blood presentation in fact tomorrow we're already going to start talking about the next one but before i just finish i would have liked to mention that at the very beginning the song that has been based on the psalm 42 um as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. That is um, why I have chosen that is because God says in chapter 6 of John that he is, he who eats of him shall never, never, um, he who comes to him shall never hunger, and he who believeth in him shall never thirst again. So the bread of life and the water of life in the seven iron statement is actually one and the same. He who cometh to me shall never hunger, and he who, who believeth in me shall never thirst again. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the inspiration that you have given me today to bring before the people who will be viewing these lectures in the future. 
the bread of life, which is your word, and the waters of life, which is believing in you, dear Lord, are indeed treasures of heaven that we supposed to gather in our hearts out of which no issues or curses would flow anymore but pure blessings so that we could become blessings and um, salvation unto others in the name of jesus christ amen <laughs>